So when you go to a modern NASCAR race, you will see as many Chase Elliott fans wearing the Hooters gear than his traditional Napa colors. Why is that? Well, you have to look at NASCAR history and understand why Hooters is such a relatable sponsor. Hooters was the title sponsor of the greatest race in NASCAR history, the 1992 Hooters 500, a race where Alan Kuwicki would make the Hooters brand forever an iconic NASCAR sponsor. Alan Kuwicki was a guy that represented the Hooters brand his way. With a strong amount of class and professionalism, plus fun posters like this one, the Hooters brand has typically sponsored a lot of popular drivers like Alan Kuwicki and now the most popular driver in the series, Chase Elliott. When this deal was signed in 2017, it was the perfect match. The Georgia-born driver representing the Georgia-based restaurant chain. Not to mention, the Hooters brand just has a different aura compared to Napa, Kelly Blue Book, Unifirst, and Lumar, to name a few. NASCAR's hardcore fan can relate to the Hooters brand, whether they go for the wings or for the breasts. Considering the actions of Hendrick Motorsports this weekend, a lot of NASCAR fans were caught off guard. After some awesome super sleuthing on Sunday, it was discovered that Hooters was not on Chase Elliott's car, not on the pit box, and then when you went on the Hendrick Motorsports team site, Hooters was not a listed sponsor. Then you also had for the Richmond race on the Team Hendrick site, Chase Elliott's car covered up, which this was scheduled to be the third and final Hooters race of 2024 for Chase Elliott. Then on Monday morning, Hendrick Motorsports confirmed it that yeah, we've ended our relationship with Hooters due to unfortunate business obligations that Hooters had to meet. And this is a major loss for everyone. I hate it for Chase Elliott. I hate it for Hendrick Motorsports. I hate it especially for Nick Adams because now he's not going to have a car to root for on Sundays. Now, it's not like Hooters is the only one as there are plenty of the traditional food service restaurants that are also struggling to get customers. Just to name a few that are struggling, Cracker Barrel is trying to reinvent itself with a new menu, and then you have Red Lobster filing for bankruptcy this year. A lot of these dine-in restaurants are having to re-evaluate things, considering how tedious the American economy is right now. The US dollar continues to depreciate in value, and everyone is being hit hard by that and inflation. Average Americans can't afford to spend money on luxuries like a nice meal at Hooters. Although, I do think that this is a lost opportunity for Hooters to market itself, considering how fast food has skyrocketed in the last year or so. Just look at what Chili's has done. They're marketing themselves as a restaurant that has higher quality food, yet also at reasonable prices compared to fast food. And I've experienced this firsthand as I went to Chili's a couple weeks ago and the place was just as crowded as it was in the early 2010s. Unthinkable during their COVID slump that they were in. As for the companies themselves, while they are making record profits, the costs to operate these establishments are hurting their checkbooks and stressing out the accounting departments at these major restaurants. For Hooters, it costs more to pay employees with a minimum wage going up. The price of chicken wings has soared in recent years. Then you have things like electricity bills, utilities, and cable TV packages that are another expense that they have to worry about. Right now, Hooters is reacting to the market a lot like NASCAR. They are looking to cut expenses, and one of the big ways they can do that is by getting rid of their multi-million dollar NASCAR Cup Series sponsorship of Chase Elliott. Although, I do believe that there is another motive as to why Hooters is leaving NASCAR, one that is similar to other departing sponsors like Target, Lowe's, and M&M's. It is no secret that the Gen Z demographic is the one that a lot of these major companies are targeting. NASCAR is doing it as well by introducing races like the Chicago Street Course or the Clash at the Coliseum. They want to diversify and grow their brands to where they have people that are going to invest in their products for many decades. 
With Hooters, they're a lot like NASCAR with their demographics as just 8% of their customer base is Gen Z. When you look at the reason why, it is because Hooters as a brand does not align with the values and beliefs of this demographic. Look, even if you have a simple mind, the business model of Hooters is easy to comprehend. Hooters makes their money on being a social setting to watch big games, eat chicken wings, drink beer, as well as look at and interact with pretty women. What I just described to you is a company that basically repels Gen Z in every sense of the imagination. This generation isn't that social and is actually one of the loneliest generations in America. Mainly because there's a rise of home entertainment that has made public spaces like movie theaters, arcades, and bars almost obsolete. Look, there's some people out there that have spent thousands of dollars on their own personal entertainment theater with speakers and that massive television. There's no way that those people are going to go to a noisy sports bar to watch the big game when they can do it at home. Sure, the food is good, but like I mentioned, eating out has become much more expensive. When you look at the opportunity cost, it makes much more sense just to go to Dollar General and get a 12 pack of craft beer than drive out to your local Hooters and go get a draft. As for the pretty women concept, American culture has gotten a lot more toxic in recent years because of social media. Don't believe me, just look up Joey Swole on TikTok or Instagram. I think there's a lot of men out there that don't want to interact or have anything to do with modern women in real life based on what they've seen online. Generation Z is a demographic that likes convenience and that just doesn't align with the current Hooters brand. Leading to not only sagging sales, but also a deeply depressed Nick Adams. I think all of us should try to reach out and check on him. Because in the modern era, it just seems like it's a rarity to see people go to Hooters with the boys. All right, cringe Nick Adams impersonation aside, maybe it's just because Gen Z isn't alpha enough. They'd rather be betas and go to Wingstop. Looking at this as an outsider, the business model of Wingstop aligns more with Gen Z than what you see with Hooters. You can have the wings conveniently door dashed to your door and you have more flavor options than just the Buffalo and Daytona Beach wings that they have at Hooters. In order for Hooters to survive, they have to adapt to the modern times, which means that they have to let go of one of their traditional avenues, which is the NASCAR fan. The thing is, compared to other companies, I don't think Hooters wants to leave NASCAR. They've built a strong reputation and they know that a lot of their core customers are the NASCAR fan. However, that's just the way business is. Sometimes you have to let go of things from the past in order to have a future. Whether you think the business model is good or bad, Hooters just has to adapt to the changing times, and that includes, unfortunately, getting rid of a tradition of sponsoring a car in the NASCAR Cup Series. If you enjoyed this video, there's more modern NASCAR videos on Fuel Cell Full, or there's historical content on NRF Productions that I hope you guys check out. Other than that, this is Nathan for Digital Gas House, Life's a Beach, and then you drive.